What is the coolest, most exciting place you scuba dived at? What uh, And what got you into scuba diving? I'd say the coolest place I went was probably Cancun. Um, mm. We went diving off of a, uh, a ship that was confiscated because they were smuggling stuff on it. And they used it for a little while and then eventually decommissioned and they sunk it as an artificial reef. So it was really cool. There was like these massive turtles. There's probably like four or five turtles, like just hanging out on top of this boat. And that's cool. It was like 110 feet down. And it was just, it was beautiful. It was just really cool to just see all the natural life there. So, how, how long did the tanks last? So, like a 20 minute tank, 40 minute tank? It all depends how fast you breathe, how deep you go. Typically, I would say, yeah, at that depth, probably like 30 minutes or so. Okay. Um, what got me into it to, to go back to that question? It's just something I always wanted to do, you know, read books when I was like little about like sunken treasure and all those things. And, uh, I don't know when, probably like 2016, I was like, you know what, let's get my scuba diving certification. So I just, I started there and I just kept getting more certifications and just kept going deeper and deeper into it and just absolutely love it. So that's cool. Okay. Nice. I can't do that. I'm too claustrophobic to do that stuff. I am too. No, yeah. no, you're not going to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. No. Eight years in the Navy. It's not, I don't huh. like it either. Yeah. Like if I can't see the bottom, right. I don't like jumping in. Right. <laughs> That's pretty fair. I yeah. mean, I've done some night diving before and had some hesitations jumping in the water and starting to go under, mm-hmm. like when it's pitch black and nope. I'm like 30 feet down and I still can't see the bottom. I'm like, ooh. So. Yeah, no thanks. Not a chance. (laughs) Yeah, big no thanks. Yeah. Welcome back to GI and a Cup of Joe. Once again, I'm here with Annie T. Just a regular girl, and I'm here with Justin C. Just a regular guy. In this podcast, we'd like to take off the rank and get right down to just being a regular person who made a random decision to wear a uniform in the Idaho Army National Guard. All of us come from very different backgrounds, but we do have one common goal, to better our future. Not just to better our future for ourselves, but for our families and the ones we love. We encourage you to listen to each story and see how regular people with average grades, average attitudes, and common fears about their future find their strength and their ability to be resilient and to be able to accomplish extraordinary things. Welcome to season two. Well, today we're talking to, officially, he's Captain Parker Johnson, uh, but honestly, just Parker. Uh, Let's go back to high school. Where did you go to high school? What kind of student were you? So, back in Iowa. So, grew up in Marshalltown, Iowa. Um, In high school, I would would definitely classify myself as a band geek. Another band geek. Here we go. What instruments? Drums. Okay, we so, almost have a one band of the cooler here, band geeks, maybe. <laughs> yeah, the, the flowy say, surfer like, boy hair. That's the top of the band. Yeah, geek pile. Yeah. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. That's good. Um, so definitely a band geek, drummer. Um, just kind of like floating my way. Like, how many study halls can I get? Um, <laughs> What's yeah. your favorite subject? Probably, probably band probably or study band. hall. <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, good. that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Um, Were you in the marching band, jazz band, stuff like that? I wasn't in the jazz band. I was not a fan of jazz music, but uh, marching band was a ton of fun. And I'd say mostly just because of the people I was around. We just made it a lot of fun. Yeah. And just playing the drums is really fun and really cool, I always thought. so. How much time do you spend on them? Like like today, how often do you get on them? I have, I I bought a little electric jump set. I haven't played in years. Um, but probably a couple of months ago, I bought a little electric jump set and I'll tinker around on it every once in a while. It's, uh, I haven't, uh, haven't gotten back to where I was before, Yeah. but, uh, it's, it's really fun. Have you ever need garage band or anything like that? Never. No. Well, that's still cool. I think it's cool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Between the two of us, um, I think that you're probably next on the list, like like band cool. Yeah, I am. With the I'm gonna say that. Saxophone. saxophone. Oh, saxophone right? yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Cool yep. I agree. I picked it because the guy in the clarinet section was super hot in the fifth grade. And so I couldn't play the clarinet because that would be obvious. I liked him. Oh. So I chose the saxophone. I thought you would True story. gone to the clarinet there. No, no clarinets no, for no. me. No. Oh, shoot. This, no. But if I was in the sax section, I got to sit next to the clarinet section and he was in the clarinet section. So it made sense to me in the fifth grade. So why not? 
Yeah. I got to stand in the back. I was baritone tuba, French horn, trumpet. Mm, the peanut so, gallery. That yeah, oh, yeah. We always <laughs> called you guys. That's exactly right? what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I joined band because they said I couldn't learn an instrument in a year. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, really? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, so thinking back to your senior year, um, what kind of path did you have set out for yourself? Uh Kind of just, um, you know, graduate. Uh, originally, I was going to go to college and uh, go into law enforcement. Um, like be a cop? Yeah, to be a cop. And overall, I, I wanted to be, my, my dream was like this narcotics investigator or Fun. detective or whatever. Um, ended up uh, changing, well, probably a couple of years later. Um, but... Never really like considered the guard or anything. Well, I, I did a little bit. I talked with recru- recruiters and things. Like in high school? Or? Yeah, in high okay. school. Um, but I was like, no, not right now. So ROTC in college? Mm-hmm. You did? I did. Okay. Where'd you go to college? BYU-Idaho. Oh. So, so you so grew that, up? Go ahead. You grew up in Iowa, which is the other Idaho. It is, yes. <laughs> it, that was it, my next it question. It is the other Idaho. Idaho. So <laughs> it is. I was going to say, like, you do know you're in Idaho, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um and what got you to BYU Idaho versus going directly to Utah? Oh, wasn't much of a fan of Utah. Um, been there, it was just way too busy for me, and I had a lot of friends that were going to to Idaho. So I'm like, I'll go to Idaho, just a smaller town. If they, like Marshalltown, where I grew up, was like twenty five thousand people. So really, anything bigger than that was kind of a culture shock. So <laughs> yeah, I, I can. Rexburg see that. was a lot more my style. <laughs> That Plus just sense. all the outdoor stuff. There's outdoor outdoor stuff too in Utah, but I liked Rexburg a lot more. Oh, okay. So what year did you graduate? 2014. 2014. Okay. So graduated 2014. Walk us through how you got here. So in college, it was probably my after a year and a half or so. Um, was kind of really struggling there to pay everything off and uh, saw a recruiter and I went and talked to him. And uh, so while I was there, I enlisted in field artillery, um, fully enjoyed that. Uh, but I felt like I could do more and I was, I, I wanted to help. And so that led me to joining the ROTC program and then commissioned as an armor officer, um, which I absolutely loved. Uh, tanks are the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody says. Speaking the right language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just going through my career, did my platoon leader time. I did my executive officer time. Um, and it's kind of like got a, like a, a point where I needed to decide, you know, do I want to keep going on this career path or is there something different for me? And I, I decided, you know, there's a, there's a finance spot at, at the the brigade that I thought about doing. And, um, I'm like, you know, like that, I think that would apply a lot of real world experience and everything that I could use for, for daily life. And, you know, as awesome as tanks are in the civilian world, not too applicable, um, for actually firing a tank and stuff. Yeah. And there's the management piece and everything you <laughs> right. can say. Um, but, uh, yeah, decided to, to branch transfer and go to the finance branch and um, been doing it since probably 2021, 2020. So it's, it's been fantastic. I've absolutely loved it. So did you, uh, did you pick up a, like a fed tech job or an uh, AGR job or? So after getting that uh, branch transferring to finance, I was, I was just doing temporary OTA, ADOS, full-time positions um, for, yeah, until, well, probably about three years, a little over three years, um, till just things started drying up. And, uh, and then I'm like, okay, well, time to apply for a, a fed tech position or, or a position there and ended up getting picked up for, yeah, a fed tech position over at Building 600 with uh, the, the general and chief of staff. And I, I think that finance experience and everything helped get me that that position as well so. oh yeah i imagine definitely okay so spill the beans <laughs> what happens in building 600 when nobody's in there except for the big guys oh just you know you're not telling are you mm. they drink a lot of coffee 
Mm. They drink a lot of coffee. Um, hmm. Oh, I really kind of just stick in my hole there. What music I, is blasting in their office? Enya. Oh, Enya. What? No. Yeah. Like Who's playing Enya? <laughs> That's uh, Sergeant Control Jones, so. Okay. Which is pretty nice. Is there know? no music coming out of the chief of staff's office or? There is no music. Okay. So we heard that uh, the, the Army CSM likes rap music. Does he? Have you heard any rap music? I have not heard any rap music. I can't confirm hmm. or deny No that. Tupac, no Snoop Dogg. No, no. It's it's strong and yes so far. From yeah. what, <laughs> and that's not coming from, yeah, it's our major's office, so. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, so, what do you think about boot camp? Because you enlisted, right? You enlisted uh, yep, first. Yeah, I enlisted first. Uh, it was, I don't know, I didn't really know what to expect too much. Do you hear um, stories, see movies? I, I've heard stories. Um, I think it was just kind of a little bit of a shock, you know. It's just like, you know, being in Rexburg, Idaho, <laughs> and then all of a sudden going to basic and everyone's, you know, swearing and yelling. It's like, you know, it, was, it was very different. Um, but overall, like, I don't think it was all that bad it was definitely challenging a whole lot of running um but you know as long as you just did what you were supposed to do like the drill sergeants really left you alone at least towards the end of the phases well so i'm seeing i'm seeing kind of a line there like somewhere around 2010 to 2013 2014 is where basic really started to transition. I wondered about that. You know because um you're the second person now that's um uh, went to basic uh, in that time frame that has the same things to say. Like, yeah, it was challenging. There's a lot of running, physical, drill sergeants left you alone. Um, you know, we had some brand new soldiers in here, I don't know, maybe a month ago, and we were talking to them, and a couple of them have never done any physical activity at all in their life. Like, mm -hmm. no sports, no nothing, and they were like, yeah, it was super easy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right? <laughs> we said the same thing. I mean, we even started a little thing on the board, yeah. like, okay, which... Which basic training sites is it easy at, and which ones yeah. is it hard? Well, sale? I went to Sill. Uh, dang, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I joined, I did my first like PT test in RSP. I think I got like nine push-ups. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. But I mean, of course, worked on it. You know, want to stay under the radar. So if you can, if you can PT. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, week six, we had our final white face formation in basic and the drill sergeants would come around inspecting you and you're and he turns and he faces and he looks at me looks at my shoes look at my uniform and he's like who are you <laughs> have you been here the whole time yeah and i was like yes i have and he yeah. was like that's impressive and he moved on <laughs> so yeah six weeks under the radar invisible <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that was great i think like yeah graduation like we were lining up and rehearsing and everything my drill sergeant said something to me i'm like i think that's like this second or third time he had ever said anything to me other than squad leader so i'm like that's pretty good yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> happy to fly under the radar at basic yeah so uh let's take a look at your this entire process right uh you raise your right hand you join the idaho army national guard from that point until the day you walked in here what experience stands out the most for you i would probably say my commissioning over overall um kind of as an enlisted soldier, I didn't really feel like I was taken care of. And I felt like I could do that for, for soldiers. And so that kind of commissioning was an opportunity for me to be able to, to help, uh, soldiers that I was responsible for. Okay. I'm curious. Did you know about the guard, um, when you went to high school in Iowa? Uh, I knew about it. Uh, you know, I had, had like phone conversations with the recruiter when I was in Iowa. Okay. I didn't really know about it until like my, my junior or senior year. Um, and it was just very vague. Like I knew it was around. Um, but just didn't know what it offered or anything like that. I had, yeah. I, I had no idea really what it even offered until to college and saw all the, the great benefits that it has. What really has been your greatest accomplishment to date? I guess like the, the, the big thing there is, um, yeah, just, you know, in command. Um, 
always want to make that change and, you know, help, help soldiers. And, uh, you know, every year we do a little survey, you know, how, how's the command doing? Um, and it's, it's been really satisfying to see, uh, the past couple of years when we would do the survey that all the things about like, Hey, you know, how's your command doing? Are they communicating? Do you feel like you can go talk to them? Just all those things. They've just gone up and up and up. Um, which is really satisfying to me. And it kind of goes back to, you know, that reason why I, I commissioned and everything is I want to be able to, to have a greater influence. I want to be able to help. And so it's really satisfying for me to be able to see that I, I actually am able to, to make a difference in, in soldiers' lives. So. Well, I, <clears throat> I think it's a pretty impressive pedigree, like uh, 13 Series MOS, uh, branched armor, branched finance. Yeah. Yeah, why did you change out of armor? Was it because of the real world experience for finance? Yeah, it was the real world experience. And um, I really enjoyed, I was uh, the executive officer over at the brigade. And I really enjoyed being over there too. Um, just really good group of, of soldiers there. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, well, I could I could go back and do more do more tank stuff, which I absolutely love. And, or, yeah, like kind of saw like some real world like application to my army career. That's one of the things I love about the guard is having that flexibility to switch your jobs kind of mm-hmm. whenever you want to sort of a thing. Yeah, really awesome. I didn't know that was a thing, like, especially like when I was in Iowa, one of the things like, well, I plan on going to Idaho later, but I can't leave Iowa if I'm in the guard. I mean, you can you can transfer states and everything. So the flexibility is really great there. Well, how about this? If you could give advice to any high school students who like are stressed about their future, um, what advice would you give them? I would say, you know, kind of have your your personal goals. Uh, see, like, you know, what do I want to do as a career and everything? And I would say whatever like career they have, like, I would say there's a position or something within the guard that can help magnify that your your civilian ambitions and goals on top of just all the benefits that that we have especially but i would i would say give give the guard a serious look it's it's really helped me to grow and develop i didn't like being in front of people and crowds and stuff and so you know it it, it makes me come out of your comfort zone it, it def- <laughs> yeah it, it definitely makes me come out of my my comfort zone i figured you know all those times that you know you're scared to do something or or you know be in front of crowds like it, it, it forces you to do that in which, you know, everything is it's just like a muscle, you know, you know, the more you exercise it, the, the easier and easier it gets. And it's, it's helped me to be able to do that. I would come to the point in the podcast where we ask the most important question. Yeah. Okay. Is Sasquatch real? I've seen, you know, that one video, you know, like the classic Sasquatch, like walking in the woods. I don't know. I just haven't seen much evidence of it. Um, I think I can definitely be, be swayed, you know. I think, you know, same thing with a lot of different things. Like, you know, if I have the evidence, like, I have an open mind. When I say yes or, or no, uh, uh, <laughs> on the fence, but. I can be swayed. Okay. It's pretty safe. It's not a no. No, but it is not a <laughs> it, no. It's not a no. It's not a no. <clears throat> and we do have a little bit of grass we have to clear up. Um, we stepped on this Heart Major's grass again. I'm sorry. Um, we said FedTech, ADR, and ADOS, and we've addressed these before, but do you want to refresh people what FedTech means? Yeah, FedTech is Federal Technician. It's one of the one of the full-time positions that, that they offer out here. Um, AGR and ADOS is the exact same way. AGR um, doesn't have an end date. Um, if you are a, a soldier in good standing and come out here and, and you're not afraid to work, you could get a full active duty retirement as an AGR. Uh, ADOS usually has a one year expiration date and people that are on ADOS, um, have to reapply every year to continue that process. It's like temp work. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, and typically you don't get an AGR job unless you start on ADOS first so they can be, evaluate you. Uh, and you referenced 13 series MOS. Mm-hmm. Field artillery. Field artillery. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yep. And then we all referenced Building 600. And again, <laughs> that's where the generals work, the top of the top. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it's a scary building. It's a hot zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why he listens to Top Gun, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for my interview, like going in there, like Colonel Washington asked me, like, "Hey, you know, do you want, know where this office is?" I'm like, "I'll be honest, ma'am, I I haven't been past the auditorium, which is right next to the entrance of the building. Right. <laughs> so I have no idea where anything is at in that building. So unless you get in trouble unless you get in yeah, trouble then which, you know where all the offices yeah, are yeah yeah luckily no i have not been in trouble <laughs> well that's all the time we have for today we'd like to thank our guests and our production crew for their time join us every wednesday here on gi and a cup of joe see you next week <laughs>